Hi everyone, my name is Eric Lucero. I'm pleased to have you here at the Quantum AI campus. I'm gonna walk you around, show you a bit about not only the history of how we got here, show you a little bit more about the space and the lab and where we're headed. So I'd love to start with our Sycamore quantum processors. Behind this piece of metal right here on this circuit board and all these connectors that we have is the actual quantum processor. This system gets mounted into our cryostat and that system we're gonna see in full scale just a moment inside the lab. So it's also a pleasure to have you here for all the reasons we can show some of the collaborations that we've had from our nine qubit systems that have now scaled up to say beyond 54. Here's a nice example of one of our systems that we had that was 22 qubits. And it's really cool because all these will be put together in the lab that you're about to see. So I'm gonna take you there, so come with me. Now I'm gonna show you where we take those Sycamore processors that I showed you earlier and install them into the cryostat. So we're gonna walk over to one of my favorite systems here. This little cryostat is what we use to cool those systems down to really a couple orders of magnitude colder than space. Basically, each one of these metal stages that you see here, from this edge all the way down, kind of in this layer cake, the very bottom of that is what we call the mixing chamber. At that point there is where we mount the quantum processor, that sycamore system that I showed you earlier, and it thermalizes to that plate. That plate gets to 10 millikelvin. That's really cold. That's some of the coldest places in the universe. That's two orders of magnitude colder than like between two galaxies. All of that system runs all the way up the top where we have wires that come out. You can see over here on our control system, those are custom control electronics that our team, engineers here at Google, have done and designed specifically to control the quantum processor inside. I like to think of them as a music player, playing music to the qubits. There's some analog pulses that come down and that musical score gets played through those wires all the way down to those qubits. There's a lot of different skill sets all over the world that these people are coming from to join the team and think about what is a quantum computer actually gonna serve everyone? and How do we do that responsibly for the world and make this uh, a tool for humanity? All right, so now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what this space is gonna look like as we scale in the future. Today, we are here right now at this point where we've just gotten past the Beyond Classical experiment and we're headed towards these next milestones to build an error-corrected logical qubit, and finally, to an error-corrected quantum computer. Now this space will grow, and we've really designed it to be the kind of place where we can land a number of these milestones along the way. Each one of these cryostats are systems that our team has spent many, many hours in design and customizations to make these some of the most powerful quantum computers in the world. We can do the impossible. And we look at quantum computing, it's something that we look at as maybe it's a 10-year investment, at the other end of that will be this tool for humanity. And I think it's an important part of that style of creativity that is not just a, a scientist's creativity or just an artist, it's actually kind of that combination of both that gives us the ability to be inventing the future. So it's been a pleasure to share with you all this space. I can't wait to show it to you in person and to see this place come together for an error-corrected logical qubit. Until then, take care, I'll see you all later.